Mizzy World Entertainment is here to present a Mad Mizzy Sports NBA exclusive, finals exclusive, with the 2022 NBA Finals tipping off last night and us having weeks and weeks of coverage and, and build up. I'm here to utterly destroy this false narrative that is floating around by Max Kellerman and Skip Bayless. I don't know if y'all hate Steph because he the light-skinned brother with the, with the light eyes that everybody wanted, even... I'm not even going to get into why they hate on stuff, but I'm here to give the utmost praise to one of the top NBA Finals performers in NBA history. Let's dive right into it. So to start it off, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Steph Curry, in his career for the Finals, averages 26 points per game, 6 assists per game, and 5 rebounds per game. At the points per game average, he is currently 10th all time in points per game scored in the playoff in, in the finals. In the finals, he's a top 10 scoring performer in the finals. In the history of the league, who are we comparing him to to say that he's not performing well in the finals? The only other point guard, the only other player that's listed only as a point guard that's that's averaging more points ahead of him in the finals is Kyrie Irving, who only played with who only played in two finals in comparison to Steph Curry being in the six finals this year. And he also played with the one of the greatest facilitators the game has ever known, LeBron James. I'm not even going to think about what Steph Curry and LeBron James could have been. Rick Barry is listed as a point guard, shooting guard. That's the only other guards that's in the top ten. Who are we comparing them to? But let me start off at number three with my number three reason why Steph Curry is a top, top five NBA Finals performer of all time, in my opinion. Number one. What I just reiterate, what I just stated, he averages 26 points per game in the finals. You know what he averages for his career in a regular season? 24, no, yeah, 24 points per game. Literally, every year he goes to the finals, he averages more points in the finals than he, than he did that regular season besides the one, se the one series in 2016 that everybody wants to hold their head on, which wasn't a terrible series. He still averaged 23. He still had a 30-point game. In game five, it's just that LeBron and Kyrie went for 41 apiece. You know what I'm saying? So what, what can you do? Him and Clay went for 25 apiece. 25 apiece. It was still was a close game. But, hey, it's, it's sometimes it's hard to overcome two superstars going utterly ballistic. You dig what I'm saying? So that's number one. He's clear. He averages a higher percentage in the finals than he does in the regular season. Let's look at 2017. 2017 uh, finals, he averaged 27 points per game, 9 assists per game, 8 rebounds per game. In 2017 regular season, he averaged 25 points per game, 7 assists per game, 5 rebounds per game. Better in every category. Damn near averaged a triple-double in the 2017 finals. To say that he does not perform in the finals is just a lie. The 2018 finals, he the 2018 regular season, he averaged 28 points. Well, no, the 2018 finals, he averaged 28 points per game, 7 assists per game, 6 rebounds per game. The 2018 regular season, he averaged 26 points per game, 6 assists, 5 rebounds. Better every category. 2019 finals, he averaged th 31 points per game, six assists per game, five rebounds per game. The 2019 regular season, he averaged 27, five and five. Better in every category. Let me move on to the next one because I clearly checked the box on that one. My number two reason why Steph Curry is a top five finals performer of all time. Who else doesn't have bad moments aside from Michael Jordan, Michael Jeffrey Jordan in the finals? Name one. And I love, I want to shout out uh, Chris Broussard. I want to shout out, I forgot who else it was. Was it um Shannon that pointed out, uh, didn't Larry Bird only average 15 points per game in his first finals appearance? Oh, it's only his second year in the league. He was in the finals and he averaged 15 points per game. Cut it out. Cut it out. Uh, I'm glad that they brought up Tragic Johnson in 1984. Could you imagine if social media was out, if ESPN was booming the way it is, and you had the great Magic Johnson miss two free throws in overtime and double down by giving away the game-losing turnover or game-winning in Boston's case. Cut it out. And then for the last one, Isaiah Thomas. 
y'all all all notice with this trend that I'm going back 40 years to even compare a point guard. But yeah, on to Isaiah Thomas. He had multiple single-digit scoring games in the finals. He's undefeated, but still, come on, brother. The ankle performance, I can't knock that. The dude came back, ankle hurting there. I bangs with Isaiah, but the longevity with Steph into the game, he's been left Isaiah. You dig what I'm saying? So, for me, the second one is, stop acting like people, like, other great players didn't have uh, down moments in the finals. And to look at Steph's 2016 finals, he averaged 23 points per game, four assists per game, five rebounds per game. The assists just show that nobody else was scoring and he couldn't get the movement the way he wanted to. But you look at the points, that's not bad. You look at 23 points per game in the finals, look at the list of the top uh, points per game in the finals. You'll see some big names that didn't even average that. They didn't even average that. So who are we comparing them to? Y'all see that I'm keeping a trend. Who are we comparing them to? God? For the number one reason, though. The number one reason that Steph Curry is a top performer in the NBA Finals is simply because he won the 2015 NBA Finals. I don't care if they didn't hand him the award or this, that, and the third. When you look at the 2015 NBA Finals of Steph Curry being his first time in the NBA Finals, I don't care if Kyrie Irving wasn't out there. The first, the game that Kyrie Irving played in, they lost. So I don't know how logically you could make an argument that with Kyrie Irving, they would have won. And don't even bring up Kevin Love because he was already hurt two series ago. Didn't he get hurt in the Eastern Conference semifinals against Boston? Stop bringing up Kevin Love like he got hurt that series. He was out. And he underperforms against Draymond Green in every single finals. But I guess 2015, that would have changed. Stop it. You look at the 2016 uh, finals. I mean, you look at the 2015 finals for Steph. 26 points per game, 6 assists per game, 5 rebounds per game. Down 2-1 to the great LeBron James. This being your first time in the finals. I don't care who is out there. Della Vadova giving him all types of hell, all the energy in the world, chasing him all around the court. And what did he do? Showed out in game four, down 2-1, scored 22 with Iggy, eight assists while Iggy had no assists. Then you look at game five, he doubled down and had 37. He had 37 in the in the game, basically the series shifting game. When it's 2-2, whoever wins this next game is probably going to have the momentum to win game six, which the Warriors did. He clearly was the finals MVP for the, the, the Golden State Warriors in 2015. Stop spreading this false rumor, this false narrative that Steph does not perform in the NBA Finals. He is clearly a top five NBA Finals performer of all time. Cut it out, man. Y'all know what it is, man. Man, Mizzy Sports, NBA, NBA Finals exclusive. Steph Curry Finals tribute. And guess what? I'm glad the Warriors lost yesterday, and I'm doubling down. They will win in five. They're going to win four straight. Steph Curry's going to win the finals MVP. He's going to put all this bull job to rest. Let me know what y'all think. Like, comment, share, listen, subscribe. Gang.